Hello and welcome to Simply Explained English, where we explain some words in a simple and funny way. I'm Lisa, and this is my co-host Eric. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today we will be talking about the second part of shopping vocabulary. Shopping is something that many people enjoy, but it can also be challenging if you don't know the right words and phrases to use. Exactly, Lisa. That's why we're going to teach you some useful vocabulary and expressions related to shopping in this video. Woohoo! Let's get started. The first word we want to teach you is to try on. To try on. To try on. Eric, can you explain what it means? To try on means to put on a piece of clothing or a pair of shoes to see if they fit or look good on you. In short, to test something by wearing it. For example, if you go to a clothing store, you might want to try on some jeans or a shirt before you buy them. That's right, Eric. And where can you try on clothes or shoes in a store? Well, usually there is a special area in the store called the fitting room or the dressing room where you can try on clothes or shoes in private. That's good to know, Eric. And what do you say to the salesperson when you want to try on something? Well, you can say something like, "Can I try this on?" or "Where can I try this on?" or "Do you have a fitting room?" And if you need a different size or color, you can ask, "Do you have this in a smaller size?" or "Do you have this in blue?" Very good, Eric. Now let's listen to a short dialogue that shows how to use to try on in a real situation. Hi, I'm looking for a dress for a party. Do you have anything in red? Yes, we have some red dresses over here. What size are you? I'm not sure. Maybe a medium. Okay, here are some medium red dresses. You can try them on in the fitting room over there. Thank you. That was a nice dialogue. Yes, I agree with you, Lisa. Okay, let's move on to the next word: window shopping. Window shopping. Window shopping. Lisa, can you explain what it means? Sure, Eric. Window shopping means to look at the goods in the store windows without buying anything. For example, if you walk along a street with many shops and you see something that catches your eye, you can stop and look at it for a while. That's window shopping. It's a nice explanation, Lisa. Do you like window shopping, Eric? Well, sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. It depends on my mood and my budget. I see. I like window shopping because it's fun and relaxing. I can see what's new and what's trendy without spending any money. I understand, Lisa. But sometimes window shopping makes me want to buy things that I don't need or can't afford. That's true, Eric. That's why you have to be careful and control yourself when you window shop. That's true, Lisa. Now let's listen to a short dialogue that shows how to use window shopping in a real situation. Hey Kelly, do you want to go shopping with me? Sure, Rosa. Where do you want to go? Let's go to the mall. There are many stores there. Okay, but I don't have much money to spend. That's okay, Rosa. We can just do some window shopping. All right, that sounds fun. Let's go then. That was a nice dialogue, Lisa. Did you notice how Rosa and Kelly used window shopping and other related words? Yes, I did, Eric, and I think our viewers did too. Now let's move on to the next word: checkout. 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 Eric, can you explain what it means? Sure, Lisa. Checkout means to pay for the goods that you have selected in a store. It's the final step of the shopping process. For example. If you buy some groceries at a supermarket, you have to go to the checkout counter or the cashier to pay for them. That's good to know, Eric. And what do you say to the cashier when you are at the checkout? Well, you can say something like "Hello, how are you?" or "Thank you, have a nice day," or "I need a bag," or "Can I have a receipt?" And if you have any questions or problems, you can ask, "How much is this?" or "Can I return this?" Very good, Eric. Now let's listen to a short dialogue that shows how to use checkout in a real situation. John, I'm done shopping. Do you want to go now? Yes, I do. Where is the checkout? 
It's over there, near the entrance. Okay, let's go then. Did you understand the dialogue, Lisa? Yes, I did. It was very simple. The woman finished her shopping and asked John if he wanted to go, and then John asked where the checkout was. Yes, Lisa. And what do you think about how they paid for the shopping, credit card or cash? Hmm, I think they paid it. With credit cards, because many people use credit cards. Yes, I agree, Lisa. Do you prefer to pay with cash or a card when you go to the checkout? Well, I prefer to pay with the card because it's more convenient and safe. I don't have to carry a lot of cash with me. But what about you? I prefer to pay with cash because it's more physical and easy. I can see how much money I have and how much I spend. I understand, Eric. But sometimes paying with cash can be slow and annoying. You have to wait for the change and count the coins. That's true, Lisa. But sometimes paying with a card can be risky and complicated. You have to remember your PIN and check your balance. Hmm, it's true as well, Eric, but using a credit card is easier for me anyway. Okay, let's move on to the last word, to bargain. To bargain. To bargain. Do you know what it means? Hmm, to bargain. Is it when you negotiate the price of something with the seller? Sure, Eric. To bargain means to negotiate the price of something with the seller. It's a way of trying and to get a lower price or a better deal. For example, if you go to a flea market or a street vendor, you might bargain with them to get a cheaper price for a souvenir or a gift. That's right, Lisa. And do you like to bargain? Well, sometimes I do, but sometimes I feel shy or embarrassed to bargain. I know what you mean, Lisa. Bargaining can be difficult, but it can also be fun and useful. That's true, Eric. And what about you? Do you like to bargain? Well, I like to bargain, but I'm not very good at it. I always end up paying more than I should. Oh, it's funny, Eric. Maybe you need some practice. Yes, I should, Lisa. Okay, now let's listen to a short dialogue that shows how to use to bargain in a real situation. Wow, look at this scarf. It's so beautiful. Yes, it is. It's made of silk and hand-painted. So, how much is it? It's 50 dollars. But for you, I'll give you a special price. 45. 45 dollars? That's too expensive. Can you lower the price? Well, this is a very high quality scarf. I can't go lower than $40. $40? That's still too much. How about $30? $30? No, 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 that's too low. How about $35? $35? Hmm, okay, I'll take it. Okay, deal, here you go. Thank you. that was a nice dialogue, Eric. They bargained hard. It was a good example of how to bargain well. Yes, I think so, Lisa. Sarah was very good at bargaining. She managed to get the scarf for $35, which is 15 less than the original price. That's right, Eric. She was very persistent and confident. She didn't accept the first offer, and she kept asking for a lower price. That's true, Lisa. But the vendor was also very smart. He started with a high price, and he pretended that he couldn't go lower than $40. He made Sarah think that she was getting a great deal. That's a good point, Eric. Maybe we can do a special video on bargaining in the future. That sounds like a great idea, Lisa. I'm sure our viewers would appreciate that too. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's wrap up this video. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to all our viewers for watching. See you next time on Simply Explained English. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.